Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have a German white wine in a large fluted, no, tall fluted bottle rather than a large fluted bottle. Actually, if you ever see these, these bottles that are uh, this shape, but in magnum size, they are some of the most wondrous uh, wine bottles you'll ever see. The only problem is they're slightly too large to fit in a lot of wine racks and shelves. Anyway, no, back to the wine. Uh, the wine, yes, it's a German wine, uh, as some people might think from the shape of the bottle, although this shape is by no means exclusive. Uh, to Germany, but it's not Riesling. Um, it's from the Rheinhessen, uh, home of, um, I think I'm right in saying a lot of uh, Germany's Liebfrau milk, but it's not Liebfrau milk. Um, it's um, Pinot Grigio, but it doesn't say Pinot Grigio on there. It's got, uh, oh, it doesn't say Pinot Gris either. It says Grau Burgunder, uh, Grey Burgundy. There is a, there is a family of uh, Burgunder grapes that they, uh, or that, as they're known in German. So uh, Pinot Blanc is Weiss Burgunder. Uh, Pinot Noir is Spät Burgunder. There's an early ripening variety of Pinot Noir called Fru Burgunder, uh, but this is Grau Burgunder. And um, for, so it's Louis Guntram, 2016 Grau Burgunder. And um, 2016 was, 2015 was a fabulous vintage in, in Germany. Warm, uh, plentiful harvest. Uh, 2016 was a little bit of a difficult one. It was one of those where, uh, for most of the summer, all the growers were going, oh dear, we're going to have horrible, horrible harvest. And then uh, towards the, uh, I think, middle, end of August, uh, everything brightened up and uh, most things ripened. So I look at the alcohol on here, and uh, it's 13.5% from a vintage that uh, wasn't one of the ripest around. But uh, So I'm expecting something that's got a little bit of, um, I don't know what the German for cojones is, it's... Um, uh, I, I won't make up a word cause in case I offend any German speakers, but anyway, I'd better taste it, haven't I? Creamy, peachy, peachy nutty. Um, it smells as if it's going to be, well, from the 13.5% alcohol, I, I would have, uh, uh, and that's what I'm expecting, something that's got a, a little bit of power and, uh, uh, and intensity. And um, it's not hugely fruity, that peach is uh, just generally uh, in the background. But um, when I think of, um, uh, of, of, of uh, some Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigios, uh, Grau Burgunder, some of them have a, a little spicy edge. There is a touch of that here, it's not really front and centre in the way that uh, you can get it sometimes in Alsace. But here um, it feels like it's going, to, it's going to be a wine with presence. When you come to taste it, there is a touch of spice. Oops, probably nearly choking here. Um, and you feel something of that um, um, gentle warmth of alcohol. Sometimes if, if, you, if the alcohol is too high in a wine, it's almost like it's not, not quite burning your throat, but um, uh, you get it, 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 people use this descriptor hot. Here it's on the just warm side, so it's got weight, it's got presence in your mouth. Probably not the sort of wine that you want to sit down and uh, sip by itself, but um, because of that, that lovely texture, that juicy plump peachiness, um, sort of thing I want with, um, ooh, let's have a thing, creamy mushroom sauce on pasta. Uh, I imagine that will go rather nicely. I, I, we've got a chicken that's roasting in the oven at the moment, and uh, I think if I uh, maybe add a little bit of cream into the sauce at the end of that, um, you're not supposed to add cream to sauces these days, so we're supposed to be healthy. Oh, stuff like that. Uh, I, think, I think it would go rather nicely. Uh, the, uh, the alternative, it's, got, it's cooking on a bed of onions, and I think if the onions go sufficiently soft and caramelised, all I'll do is liquidise them with the uh, uh, juices that ooze from the chicken, and something like that with this. I'm salivating at the thought of this, so um, I, I, will, uh, I will consume the rest of this glass. It's a really nice wine, not too assertive, and a very good introduction to um, uh, life beyond Riesling uh, with, with German white wines for those who, uh, who've who got to Riesling and they're going, OK, what's next? Um, but um, tasty, and uh, I'm going to enjoy this tonight. See you soon.